Okay, welcome back after the break. Um, just before we went for our break, uh, we looked at the parable of the first first one, parable of the sower and the seed, and then parable of the good seed and the uh, the tares. Okay. Now, in the same thought process, in the same truth, Jesus also uses a, another parable. Okay, with this time not about farming, but fishing story uh, to bring about the same truth in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 to 50. So can one of you please read Matthew chapter 13, verses uh, 47 through 50, please? Matthew chapter 13 from 47. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up, up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in the baskets. But through the bad away, this is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked as they replied. Amen. So Amen. thank you. Jesus here is using a simple fisherman's story. So he's using something that's very, very familiar in their world. Farming is very, very familiar in the context of Israel and also fishing. Okay. And he uses this farming and fishing story to describe what will happen in the end of the age and he's saying how the good will be separated from the bad and what is going to happen okay so he says that the big fishing net is being thrown and everyone will be caught into that and will be brought to the place of judgment where they will be sorted out so the question is where will you and i be okay will we be that good fish that good seed that is gathered into the kingdom of god or will be that bad fish where Jesus says, you know, will be thrown into the hell of eternal fire, the furry furnace of fire, okay? Meaning into eternal place of separation or it is hell, okay? So he says, you know, listen, this is what will happen. Okay, this is the story is for you and me to understand what is going to happen in the end of the age unless a man is... Born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God or he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So unless a person is born again, you know, uh, he cannot enter the kingdom of God again. Uh, uh, you know, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So now is a good time for people to be born again, to enter into the kingdom of God, because the time is coming when the big fishing net will be cast and every soul that ever lived will be gathered before the throne of God and those who are born again will be will see the kingdom of God the kingdom of heaven and those who are not born again will be eternally separated um, from Jesus in the place of a fiery furnace of fire and it's not a happy place to be okay and it's a place called hell Okay, and then he speaks two other parables. Jesus talks about in the same um, uh, chapter of Matthew, chapter thirteen, um, and both of these parables that he speaks in verses thirty-one, thirty-two, and thirty-three, he's revealing to us the power uh, of the nature of the kingdom of God. Okay, so Matthew chapter 30, uh, thirteen, verses thirty-one, thirty-two, and thirty-three, he speaks two other parables where he is revealing to us the power of the nature of the kingdom of God. Okay, so can somebody read that, please? Matthew thirteen, thirty-one, thirty-two, and thirty-three. Matthew chapter thirteen, from thirty-one, he told them another parable: the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, when, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and become a tree so that the birds of the air come and preach, preach in its branches. Okay. Uh, the other one? Also. Yes, yes. 
she told them still another parable the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough okay so what does he say in verse 31 he's telling them another parable that he puts forth to them and he's saying the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed so he's saying look no i'm telling you something more about the kingdom of heaven and it's like a mustard seed and the mustard seed he says is the smallest of all seeds but when it is sown into the ground it takes root it grows into a big plant where even the birds of the air come and come and nest in it and then he continues the same thought and he gives another story or another parable in verse 33 and he says the kingdom of god or the kingdom of heaven is like yeast or like baking soda okay that women put uh, to making bread or cake or biscuits whatever and they just put a little bit into the dough but it affects the whole dough it brings about uh, results and consequences and it affects every the whole batter that is there okay so what is he saying through this these two parables about the mustard seed and the leaven or the yeast The word that God speaks, okay, can be small, okay, yes, but it has the potential to influence, to, be, to become pervasive, to infiltrate its entire environment, the entire city, the entire nation, okay. So this is how God works. He always begins very, very small, like a small mustard seed he also begins very small like a leaven just a little but what is the intent that god has to affect the entire environment okay now where is the kingdom of god yes what does luke chapter 17 verse 20 and 21 say luke chapter 17 verse 20 and 21 says now when he asked now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is where? Is within you. Is the kingdom of God is within you. Okay? So, where the kingdom of God is within us. So the mustard seed is where? In us. The little leaven is where? Inside us. And um, wherever you are, this mustard seed or this leaven has the potential to influence your environment. Or God has the power, he has the capacity, uh, the strength to, you know, influence your environment. And he can influence or parade his kingdom in and through the uh, sphere or the environment that he has placed you and god wants his kingdom to invade to infiltrate every part of our city and our nation and the nations of the world or every sphere or environment that he has placed us so you and i have got the kingdom of god in us we are that mustard seed you and i are the leaven uh, god has put us where he has put us okay um we can say the mustard seed is so small, the leaven is so little, you know, and you can tell God, God, I am so small, I'm so insignificant, you know, what influence can I have in my environment? You know, I'm not a great preacher, great teacher, great miracle worker, I'm very small, I'm very insignificant, but what influence can I have upon my environment or what influence can i have in my locality or even my city or my state or my nation but uh, jesus is telling us god is reminding us that there is something inside you that has the potential to grow something inside you that has a potential to grow into something bigger and something greater and something huger it has the potential to invade the entire environment and what is that called the kingdom of 
God. Okay. So if you believe what is inside you is a mustard seed, what is inside you is a leaven, and you are that mustard seed, or you are that leaven in the city of God, and God can affect the city, the environment, the locality, the nation, in and through you. You have that faith that the kingdom of God is inside you, then yes, God can use you mightily. Okay. Yes, in our own self, we are insignificant. In our own self, we might not have the potential. In our own self, we might not have the capacity, but there's something powerful and much greater that is inside us, and that is called the kingdom of God. Okay, And that something inside us can affect our locality, the workplace, our families, uh, our city, entire city, our state, and our nation. Okay, So the kingdom of God is in our midst, and his desire is that that it will affect the world around us, so the environment around us. Okay. Um, then, so this is what he spoke about how powerful the kingdom of God is through these two parables. Then he speaks two more parables to reveal the value that we must place on the kingdom of God. So you know what is the parables that he spoke about the value that we must place on the kingdom of God? Anyone? Online students? What is the parables that he spoke about uh, that reveal to us the value that is that he places on the kingdom of God? Yes, the value of the kingdom of God. Hidden treasure in a field. Okay, good. And also the pearl. Okay. Yes. So can somebody please read Matthew chapter, thank you, Nina, John, Pearl, uh, and the hidden treasure in the field. Yes. Thank you, Jack, in parable of selling everything to purchase God's uh, kingdom. The, 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 the farmer sold everything to purchase that field in which he saw the treasure, or the businessman sold everything valuable to buy that pearl of great worth or great price. Okay. So Matthew chapter 13, verses uh, 44 to 46. Matthew chapter 13, 44 to 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, uh, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold, uh, sold all that he had and bought it. Amen. Thank you. So what is Jesus saying here? He's saying, listen, here's the truth about this unseen kingdom. Okay. If you really want to enjoy this kingdom, if you really want to experience this kingdom, then here is how you need to treat this kingdom. Okay. Okay. So if you want to experience this kingdom, if you want to enjoy this kingdom inside you, in your, see it influencing your environment, then this is how you have to treat the kingdom of God. So how you have to treat the kingdom of God, you have to treat the kingdom of God as a man, you know, who was digging the field and he saw this huge, big treasure and he went and sold everything to buy that field so that that treasure becomes his okay or the the businessman you know who was looking for that one pearl exquisite pearl really beautiful you know pearl and when he found that pearl what did he do it was very very expensive he went and sold everything that he had and he went and bought that one pearl okay so what is jesus trying to say in these two parables he's saying this is how you must treat the kingdom of God. How do you treat the kingdom of God? It should be like a treasure in the field. It should be like that pearl of great value. Anything less than that is unacceptable, okay? Because it is the kingdom of God, okay? So the question is, will you and I place such great importance, such great value on the kingdom of God. The question is, will you and I treat the kingdom of God as this great treasure in the field? And the question is, will you and I treat the kingdom of God as that pearl of great price? 
or does the kingdom of God become something that we treat that only when we go to church on Sunday, Sunday mornings? Or is the kingdom just a little thing, you know, when you have some spare time, you go and listen to the man of God preach, or you go to some prayer meeting or some fasting prayer or some revival meeting. Uh, but he's saying the kingdom of God is all in all. Okay? And you are part of that kingdom. It's, it's your pearl. It's that great prize. It's that treasure in that field uh, for which you are to leave everything, sell everything, and just pursue that kingdom. And so Jesus is saying, this is the way you have to treat my kingdom. Okay? So Jesus says, in fact, any man puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for my kingdom. What does Jesus mean here? Jesus is meaning you cannot entertain any second thought. There's no second thought. There's only one thought you must have, that this is my kingdom. You don't have any other second thoughts. And you, you, know, you are fit for his kingdom. And so this is a pretty strong uh, word that Jesus is saying. He's saying, you know, he doesn't want 50-50. Okay, he doesn't want 75 and 25. He wants what? 100%. You have to sell all that you have for the sake of that treasure. You sell all that you got for the pearl of great price. Okay. So what am I trying to say? I'm not, I'm not trying to say that we leave everything that we have and go up to the Himalayas and say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Okay. It is of no use. It's of no good to anybody. It's not going to do any good to anybody. So what I'm saying is this, that while we live in a busy, chaotic world, okay, while we are here in this busy, chaotic world where there is wicked people, you know, um, while we are doing what God has called us to do, while we are being sons and daughters of the kingdom of God in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation, and while doing all that, you know, our entire life should be centered or our entire life should revolve around the king and his kingdom. Everything that we think, our culture, our lifestyle, what, our, what we are doing, where we are going, everything should revolve around the king and his kingdom. So when you're studying, you study for the king and his kingdom. When you work, you work for his king and his kingdom okay when you're cooking at home you're doing home chores you do for the king and his kingdom okay when you are preaching and teaching you do for the king and his kingdom okay um when i go out and do anything or something i'm doing it for the sake of the king and his kingdom and that is what drives me okay and if your life is like that jesus says the kingdom of god is like that you're valuing the kingdom of god like that great pearl like that great treasure in that field and and jesus is saying that this is what i'm asking of you i'm asking of you to you know value my kingdom like that pearl of great price and that treasure in that field and nothing less okay so jackin says pursue god with all your heart soul and mind love and obey his word consistently and wholeheartedly yes very true thank you jackin um yes so Yes, Nina says, how much do we value the kingdom of God? Okay. The kingdom of God should be number one in our lives. And that is why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added into your life. So we need to reorder our lives. We need to reprioritize everything in our life where we are making his the king first and his kingdom first over everything else okay where we're saying god this is you know this is what my life is all about it's about the king and his kingdom it's about being sons and daughters of that kingdom in this world and i'm here for a purpose and what is the purpose i'm here god even as you have chosen me to be a son and daughter as your kingdom you want your kingdom to parade through my life you want your kingdom to invade through my life you want the kingdom to to be an influence in and through my life and that is the reason why i am here and so we can say god this is the reason why i that why i am here this is the reason why you have made me your son or your 
daughter for this purpose you have raised me up at such a time as this in this time in this season and you can just say god allow your kingdom to come through me and affect the people the environment the locality the community the city the state the government the nation around me okay so that is what uh, god wants to do in and through our lives okay and there are two more things here about the teachings of his kingdom uh, he says in matthew chapter 13 verses uh, 51 to 53 matthew chapter 13 verses uh, 51 to 53 can somebody read that, please? So towards the end of this chapter, Jesus, uh, you know, again turns to his disciples and he's telling him these parables. Yeah. Matthew chapter 13, verse 51 to 53. Jesus said to them, have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes, Lord. Then he said to them, therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure, treasure things new and old. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there. Amen. Thank you. So towards the end of this uh, chapter, Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 13, okay, Jesus turns to his disciples and says, what does he say? Have you understood all these things? Yeah, and what did they say to him? Yes, Lord, finally. So Jesus, Jesus must have been very content and happy. Finally, you know, thank you. You know, G thank you, God, for giving them the revelation. So he says uh, he's going to, you know, he's been going through one parable after the other. He's told them about the parable of the sower and the seed, um, the parable of the harvest, the dragnet, the pearl of great price. And then he comes to the conclusion and he says, have you understand, understood what I've been talking to you uh, all this time and they said yes okay so jesus says okay i have one more thing i want to tell you about my kingdom okay and then he talks about the scribes who are the scribes teachers okay the, those who instruct concerning the kingdom of heaven okay so he says so here are the teachers of the kingdom and these teachers of the kingdom are like householders Okay, who bring out their treasure, uh, uh, bring out of their treasure things that are new and old. Okay, so he says, listen, when you see people teaching about the kingdom of God, it's going to be like this. It's going to be like a householder who brings, who goes out and gets out of his treasures old things and new things okay this old things that he's been collecting for many years some of us have been collecting jewelry or you know if you're stamp collection or notes or whatever you enjoy collecting you know there are some things that are very very old and there's some things that you have collected in the recent past or the recent now okay so he says um you know listen this um people who are going to teach about the kingdom of god are like these householders who will go out and get out of their treasuries old and new things. So what is Jesus meaning here for this parable? What are the old and new things? Revelations, old revelations and new revelations, okay? Can you take the mic, please? Okay. Goes, uh, who brings out of the storeroom new treasures as well as like they are like uh, people who brings the revelations that God revealed to them in their secret place which are old and which are new which are new okay okay revelations from the old testament and the new testament okay so he says when you're hearing these teachers or we're hearing these scribes when they talk about the kingdom of God, there will be old things that you have already heard of, which they will be speaking to you. But there will also be new revelations that you have not heard of, you know, that, you, that they will speak to you. So he's saying you have to receive both the old and the new.
So he says, when you hear things, some things the teachers are teaching about the kingdom of God, you're going to be hearing things that are old and things that you've never heard of, things that you have never accustomed to, you're not used to, you'll be hearing new things. But he says you have to receive both. Okay. So what does he mean, you know, when he says this? He means that when you're understanding the things concerning the kingdom of God, that is what God has already spoken of. And there is what God is saying here now in the present. Okay. So if you really want to flow with the kingdom of God, you must be willing to receive what God has already said, what God has already spoken, and what God is saying. Okay. So what God has already said, uh, um, what, uh, what God is saying now in the present does not supersede or does not negate or it does not violate anything that God has already said in the past. In fact, what God has said explains what God is going to be saying or what God is saying now. So if you want to know what God is saying now in the present, if we want to know if that is the truth, if that is uh, the reality, if that is from God, how do you know it? You have to look at what you have heard from the past that God has spoken. Because what God is speaking now in the present is not going to supersede, negate or violate what he has already spoken. Okay. And Jesus is saying, you cannot only live on what God has spoken in the past. You only can't live on the old. There's also what God is saying now in the present, in the new. You also have to uh, receive it. The problem with most of us is we tend to fall or lean on what God has already told us in the past or in the old. Okay. And because why that is kind of comfortable ground for us, we're accustomed to it, uh, we are used to it. But if we are not willing to listen to what he's telling us in the you, we'll miss out on what God is saying. Okay. And if you only run after what God is saying now in the present, you will not be able to understand what he is saying because you're not, you have not understood what he's spoken in the past. Now, if you're running, uh, you know, you're, you're running after God for what he's saying now in the present is good. You have to do that, but you will not understand it because you have not understood what he has spoken in the past or you you are likely to misunderstand what he's saying in the present because you're not interpreting it in the light of what he has said in the past and that is why we have nowadays a lot of false teachings and cults that are coming up even some good preachers are saying things that are so out of context because they are so concentrating on the things that Jesus, God is speaking now they misinterpret and misunderstand what he's speaking in the present now, what he's doing in the present now, because they're not seeing it in the light of what he has already said. Okay. Because what he is, uh, everything that he's already said is in the context of what he is going to say now. Okay. So the context of what he's saying now is what he's already spoken in the past. So as people, you know, who want to understand the kingdom of the teaching of the kingdom of God, we must have hearts that are receptive to both the old and the new, to what God has spoken, to what God has said, and to what God is saying now, to what God has written already to in his word, and what God is speaking now and revealing to us now. Okay. When we do that, that will allow us to learn the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Okay. So what God has said in his written word is what God is speaking through the voice of the spirit. There's nothing new. Okay. What he's already written in his word is what he's speaking to us, the voice of his spirit. Okay. So what he's speaking to you right now, uh, you know, and, um, and we need both of it. Okay. If we don't have both of it, we will contradict what he is being said. And, um, you know, and will also contradict what has already been said because it is the same God who is speaking and he cannot contradict already what he has said in his written word, what he has spoken. So, you know, if we listen to speakers and they say some new revelation, new thoughts, you always have to go back to what has already been written in the word of God because that is our 
context because God will not reveal anything new that he is not already revealed in the past. Okay, so you and I don't have to be afraid of what is already revealed in the past, what is revealing now, because we can do, we can see it in the context of the past revelation that he has already revealed to us. Okay, so he says, you know, that's how he said you're going to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Okay, then one last parable that we will look at, and this is a very interesting parable in Luke chapter 19 that talks about stewardship okay um luke chapter 19 now we already have studied about uh, this uh, you know we've already read about the parable of the talents in matthew chapter 25 okay but uh, it's interesting to read in luke chapter 19 okay so in both these places in luke chapter 19 and matthew chapter 25 jesus is teaching about what stewardship okay talking about stewardship sorry there's a lot of um, uh, stu uh, online students and e-learning students who will be listening to the lecture later there's a lot of noise i think there is some uh, drilling work that's going on construction work that's happening just in the neighborhood so there is a lot of noise so please excuse us okay so can somebody read a uh, luke chapter 19 verses 11 to 27 please Luke chapter 19, verse 11 to 27. Now as they heard these things, he spoke another parable. Because he was near Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself the kingdom and to return. So he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minus and minas and said to them, do business till I come. Uh, but his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Master, you are minas has earned 10 minas and he said to him well done good servant because you are faithful in a very little have authority over 10 cities and the second came saying master your mina has earned five minas likewise he said to him you also be over five cities then another came saying master here is your mina which i have kept put away in a handkerchief for I feared you because you are an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, out of your own mouth I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. When then did you not put my money in the bank that at my coming I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to him who has 10 minas. But they said to him, master, he has 10 minas. For I say to you that to everyone who has will be given. And from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. But bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. Amen. Thank you. So here in Luke chapter 19, um, verse 13, uh, Jesus says that there's a nobleman, okay, and uh, he is going to receive a kingdom. And so he calls his servants and calls 10 of his servants and gives them what? What does he give them? Ten, 10 minas. And what does he tell them? Do business till I come. The King James Version says, occupy till I come. Or the New King James Version says, do business. Okay. So the literal meaning of this word occupy means do business till I 
come. So what are we supposed to do till the king of the kingdom comes back? We have to do business. Okay? Meaning what? We have to engage. Where do we do the business? In this world. That means we need to engage in the world. He is he saying we need to get into the world, which means he's saying get into and be part of the commerce of this world, be part of the transactions that happens in this world. And occupy doesn't mean sit in your house and do nothing about anything. Occupy means do business, means take ground, you know, gain territory, do business. So we can think, array. You know, what is God telling us? You know, he's asking us to do business in this world, in this wicked world. He's asking us to engage in the transactions of this world, in the commerce of this world. You know, sometimes as uh, people in the church, you know, especially those who of us who are born again, you know, we become a little spiritual. You know, uh, we when we are born again, we immediately disconnect from the world we don't want to do have anything with this world we say hey we are only physical bodies so the by being a physical body we are connected to this world but our heart and mind is in heaven so we are not occupying the things of this world we are in absentia so to tell say till he comes and that is not what god has asked us to do what has god asked us to do he's asked us to Occupy ourselves, do business, gain territory till he comes. Meaning every believer, every son and daughter of the kingdom of God, you know, we have a commission for us, that God has a commission for us to do something. And what is that? He wants us to do business on this earth till he comes back. It means he wants us to engage in this world. He wants us to get into this world he wants us to be part of the seven mountains or the seven spheres of activity in our society he wants us to be um, uh, influencers in that seven mountains or the seven spheres of activity or um, uh, uh, spheres of activity in our society he wants us to gain these seven mountains you know, conquer these seven mountains. He wants us to bring about his kingdom reign, his kingdom rule, his kingdom presence, his kingdom values, his kingdom culture, kingdom lifestyle, um, you know, kingdom thought process in these seven mountains or these seven spheres of activity or influence. What are these seven mountains? Anyone knows? They're also called the seven mind molders. What are the seven mountains? Arts. Entertainment, media, business, education, government, and religion. Okay? So sometimes we think, hey, as believers, as born-again Christians, we shouldn't be part of ent the entertainment world. Right? But God is saying, do business, occupy, be part of these seven mountains, be part of it, you know, and influence these seven mountains. Because God wants... In a, through us, he wants to pre prevail, influence, uh, uh, you know, bring about a change in the environment that we are in. So each of us have to be part of these seven mountains. So we find, you know, born again Christians thinking, hey, we should not be part of the entertainment world. We should not be part of the business world. Okay, education is fine. We shouldn't be part of government and politics. Okay, but God is saying, engage with this world, you know, go and be part of these seven these spheres or these mind molders or these mountains and bring about my kingdom rule reign because my kingdom is going to invade my kingdom, you know, that is powerful, that's pervasive, uh, like that mustard seed, like that um, leaven, which will, you know, change and is powerful, like that seed, the word you know, will bring power, will change, or will bring about my kingdom in that sphere. So, you know, we need to get into these mountains. We need to get into these seven spheres. We need to occupy. We have to do business, engage in the world till he returns. We need to be in the world, but yes, we are not of it. Okay. So, if anyone doubts 
of any of you or you know doubts whether Jesus wants you to be engaging in this world you know here's your answer he says engage in the world till I come or get into or do business till I come okay so we should never have the slightest thought of running away to the Himalayas you know staying there and saying you don't want to engage the world not do any business uh, till he returns but it's interesting what Jesus is asking us to do okay he's saying that um, you know verse 15 it says when he returned having received the kingdom so he is now also going to come back the king of kings is going to come back the lord of gods is going to come back like just like we read in this uh, parable in verse 15 says and so it was when he returned that means you know the the owner who went away the master who went away when he returned having received the kingdom he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know how much every man had gained by trading so what is it meaning here it's meaning that jesus has given us you know the talents to trade and he is going to return and he is going to return when when he has received the kingdom he is going to be coming back Okay, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, when he receives the kingdom, he's going to come back. He's going to put the enemy under his feet. Okay, and uh, he's going to, he's commanding his servants, meaning you and me, to people whom he has entrusted, what he has given to us. And he's asking, going to ask us how much more we have gained by trading. Okay, he wants to know how much each of us have, been, have gained by trading trading he wants to find out what his servants did uh, by what he has entrusted to them okay so were they successful in engaging the world how much did they multiply what he has given them what is the increase they have brought about what is the influence that they have brought about how have they been an impact how have they reached the world how much did they gain by trading uh, you know so he's going to ask us all of these things okay so this is not just a nice story that we can listen to this is a parable of the kingdom of god and this is what you know he wants his kingdom to be like um do you have a question okay so this is not just what he wants okay this is his kingdom this is what he's expecting of you and me okay yes some question When speaking about uh, the servant uh, given uh, the talent or money, like some people worked and one person he didn't work, he didn't steward it well. What if uh, they like not from here, but uh, if what if because of fear they didn't do of losing, like they got profit, so they did. What if they didn't do with the fear of being lost? Uh, the, the 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 one but the, the servant who went and hid it right what will happen to so happen, like maybe like some people they uh, stewarded doing business and they gain profit okay but what if if we are in it what if we didn't do it thinking that if i invest if i do with what i have given i will go for loss so instead of being in loss it's better to have one that god was given right okay so are you thinking when you're thinking like this are you okay you're asking if somebody thinks like this are they king thinking kingdom thinking they're not thinking kingdom thinking are they thinking kingdom mandate no because the kingdom of god is in you what you have received might be very small one might be very insignificant it can be like that mustard it can be like that leaven but what is god saying hey it's not about how big you receive it's what you do with that little in what you think is little and small and insignificant it is my power that can work and my power is so in, in invasive is so powerful is so dynamic uh, that it can just infiltrate and change the entire environment and also are we King, what is kingdom thinking, kingdom culture? We talked about it, right? It's faith, not fear. So what are you activating? You're activating fear. 
when you have fear you're not you are not seeing you're not belonging to the kingdom of god you're the kingdom of darkness okay faith is kingdom of characteristic of the kingdom of righteousness joy peace is also characteristic of the kingdom of god but also faith right that's the culture didn't we study about it yeah so uh, and also it is you are also coming to a place where you are not trusting the king of the kingdom it's also not taking him by his word right and you are not doing what he has entrusted to you to do okay good question anyone else has a question when we are taking this parable as as an worldly example in our lives in our physical lives how we have to uh, uh, take this parable in our worldly life okay how do we take this parable in our worldly life you can say that hey i like acting i want to join tv series or want to join movie or i like fashion designing you know um uh so when you're part of fashion designing you know the kind of clothes nowadays people are wearing so revealing it's not kingdom uh, values it is not uh, honoring god with our uh, bodies so you can design clothes which are good but you can also you know design it in the sense which will bring about kingdom culture okay which can also be so influencive that it can influence the hearts and minds of people okay you can also have uh, you can do business okay but you can do business where you're not bribing you're not cheating you're not doing things in the uh, in the in the in the wrong way you can also be part of the entertainment world but you don't have to submit to all of those you know the wrong things that are happening given to those wrong things you can stand and be an influence to other people who are struggling in that same field so you are being part of that mountain where you are bringing in god's kingdom culture his lifestyle his thinking his values his power uh, his uh, his um, uh you know the, going through science miracles and wonders you're bringing his values down you're bringing his his kingdom come his will be done in that place and you're doing what god wants you to do and you are influencing the minds of people in that sense so imagine you are influencing the minds of people who are being influenced uh, who are influenced by the thoughts of satan okay so what an impact you can have that you can change even what the media is presenting uh, what tv series are presenting if you look at tv series as a long time since i've seen it but it's always most about jealousy and hatred and fighting and backbiting and getting back and murdering and all of those things but you can set a trend to that by changing and bringing about kingdom lifestyle and kingdom uh, values yes to take to take in to take it on an, an example in our lives like not only in the spiritual realm in the worldly realm also can we take this exam can we take this parable as an example to do things and all yes because jesus says we are in this world right even if you're living in a neighborhood you're not living with all very good neighbors you have neighbors who are going to irritate you and rub shoulders but how are you going to show the love of christ to them but how come it's actually jesus was telling to uh, to make people understand about the spiritual things it's not like he's telling you do like this if i'm if i'm telling one example that doesn't mean i'm telling you to do this i'm i'm i i want to i want to make people understand the spiritual things by using this parable Yes, but the spiritual thing is not something that is uh, that is just something like a uh, like a philosophy. It's not a philosophy. It's not just an ideology. It's something that you live in your life here and now. So even the kingdom of God, you know, uh, salvation is eternal. It's not a realized. It's not an eschatological hope. That means way into the future where we are going to receive salv the uh, the the eternal life, every, all the benefits of the eternal life. It's a realized eschatology, something that we realize the eternal life here and now. And this, what's the point, right? So everything that Jesus is telling us, He wants us to live and experience it here and now. and that has consequences for our future our eternal future my point is uh, see uh, 
when jesus was actually using these parables he want he wanted to make people understand about what he want to tell about the kingdom of god yes so how come we can take these things as in our worldly life that we can do that we have to do the business and these things and stuff yeah, so this we are living in this world we have to do business we have to do something to eat right they are farmers they are fishermen uh, they are tax collectors so you have to be good stewards god has given you talents use those talents be good stewards and also you know how do you value god's kingdom prioritize god's kingdom what is your priority first how do you value god's kingdom that is something that we show here right now okay and also about the the scribe the householder that brings about good and old things you know uh, good old things and new things so he's talking and, and how the parable of the sower the the word of god that comes into your life how you need to understand it and live out that word only when you understand believe and live out that word is going to happen here in the future in the present so whatever jesus is speaking is has no point when we go up to heaven See, because there we are just going to, we would understand all mysteries and truth. We are just praising God and we're just glorifying him. It's what he's saying. He wants his kingdom here to, you know, how his kingdom, he wants, how he wants his kingdom to be here on the earth. Okay, so everything what he's telling us is in the context of here and now. That is why it's so relevant for us even today when he's told these parables 2,000 years back. Is it okay now? You understand? Okay. Okay, Jackin, uh, Pastor, how much each of us are able to impact the world by the power of the Holy Spirit is different measure for each of us, right? Uh, yes, uh, according to the measure we learned last uh, semester, right? The measure of uh, uh, the grace that is given to us is depends on the on the calling, the responsibility that we have. Greater the grace, uh, uh, greater the calling, greater the responsibility, greater the grace that is released to us. Yes. Yeah. So the different measures of uh, the gift or the grace of God. We learn this while studying, fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Yes. Did that help, Jackin? Okay, we're getting late for our next class. Okay, thank you everyone for joining the class today. We'll continue uh, next week. Have a blessed week. Thank you.